Hello Year 3 and Year 4 and welcome back today. Today is time for Chapter 17 and I hope we're going to find out who Mrs Moon really is. Are you excited? I certainly am. Okay, so let's get ourselves warmed up with our starter activity. Today's challenge is to read each of the sentences on the screen and decide which punctuation mark you would add to end each one. Will you use a full stop, a comma, an exclamation mark or a question mark? You must use a different punctuation mark for each sentence. The sentences are, number one, where has Harry gone? Two, Tom searched for Harry in the garden. And three, suddenly Harry vanished. Pause the video here and have a go. How did you get on? Check your sentences with mine. Well, we can't use a comma at the ends of sentences. They're used in the middle of sentences. For example, when we separate items in a list. So that leaves us with just a full stop, a question mark and an exclamation mark. So for sentence one, where has Harry gone? I've used a question mark because it's a question. It asks where and it needs an answer. The answer might be, Harry has gone to visit Sophie and Emma. For number two, I've put a full stop. This is because Tom searched for Harry in the garden is a statement. It is telling us something that's happened. For number three, I've used an exclamation mark. I've chosen this because the sentence starts with the word suddenly. An exclamation mark makes the event sound dramatic and exciting. Chapter 17, Unmasked. Dear me. I see you've beaten me to my story, dears. The children jumped up in alarm. Mrs Moon stood in the doorway holding Stella's glass of orange juice. She had a strange smile on her face as she fixed a vacant stare on the children. And now Stella remembered. This was the stare she had given them that day in the patio garden. It was a stare that at the time had felt familiar, but which she had cast aside in her mind. Sophie Gladstone, said Stella in astonishment. Is your real name Sophie Gladstone? Mrs Moon's face lit up with amusement. Oh dear me no, she chuckled. No dears, look. Her face was beaming as she gestured with her stick towards a second trunk sitting in the far corner by the window. There's mine. Over there dears. Stella walked slowly across the room towards the trunk her heart thumping against her chest. As she crouched down and carefully lifted the white lace, a haze of tears blurred her vision. But it didn't matter, of course. She knew what the letters would say. After a moment's pause, she wiped her eyes. Then with quivering voice, she read the name out loud. Miss E. M. Gladstone. Mrs. Moon placed the glass of orange juice on the trolley. That's right, dears, she said gently. I am Emma Gladstone, the same young Emma that you met when you travelled down the time tunnel. She shook her head and sighed deeply as her eyes started to glisten. Dear me, it all seems such a long time ago. Stella stood up and stared across at the old lady, already searching for signs of Emma. Suddenly the old lady smiled at Tom, then she winked. Tom had guessed, hadn't you, dear? To Stella's surprise, Tom gave a triumphant grin. She turned towards her brother in disbelief. But how, Tom? How could you have possibly known? Mrs Moon nodded towards the door. Tom had disappeared through earlier. Tom the unstoppable, she said, chuckling. I should have known you'd go snooping in there, Tom. Go along now, dear. Show your big sister. As Stella followed Tom into the bedroom, her eyes froze open. The walls were crammed with large gilt-framed portraits, each one bearing the name Gladstone on a bronze-coloured plaque at the bottom. But Tom ignored these paintings. Instead, under the solemn gaze of the various members of the Gladstone family, he strode around the bed and to the far end of the room. There, in pride of place, above a fireplace, hung by, the, by far the smallest picture. As she approached, Stella saw it was of a young, dark-haired girl, girl holding a small dog. 
E. M. Gladstone read the tag across the bottom. It was the same picture they had seen in the Gladstone's dining room when they travelled down the time tunnel. Emma Margaret Gladstone, said Mrs Moon from the doorway. And Harry, of course. Dearest Harry. But come now, let's sit down again. There really is so much to tell. Stella's mind buzzed with questions as they left the bedroom. Could this old lady really be Emma? Was it possible she was still alive after all that time? If this was her, what was she doing living in a different house in the garden? And what did Charlie Green have to do with all this? The children sat down again. Well, dears, said Mrs Moon slowly, I do believe I owe you an explanation. She smiled as she looked each of them in the eye. No doubt you've both been wondering if your adventure was just a silly dream. The children nodded in silence. Well, my dears, I can tell you now it wasn't a dream. She shook her head and chuckled. I shall never forget the day Harry found you behind that bush when we were out having lessons with Miss Walker. And do you remember the look on my face, Tom? When Jack dropped down the chimney breast? Tom could only smile and nod as his throat went tight. You know, I was sure it was going to be my good friend Lucy, said Mrs Moon, all ready to look for the, the moles. What a shock it all was. But oh, what an adventure. And now, as the old lady's eyes began to sparkle, Stella could see. How delicately, delicately time had traced itself into her small pale face. Yet, despite the wrinkles, she was still very beautiful. The child's face was still in there. The dark round eyes eager for adventure. This was Emma all right. Her youthful spirit had never left her. It had simply got buried as she had grown older. I'm sorry we had to leave you, said Stella weakly. We really wanted to bring you with us, you know. Oh, don't you go worrying yourself about that, dear, said Mrs Moon brightly. My adventure didn't end there, you know. Tom and Stella sat up in surprise as the old lady gave a mischievous grin. You see, my dears, two days later, Lucy and I went on our mole hunt after all. I told her about you two and the time tunnel, of course. She was desperate to come and meet you again. It was her idea that we should look for the tunnel as soon as possible. Now the old lady's eyes sparkled again. And you know what, Tom and Stella? She clutched her chest like an excited young child. The moles danced for us. And we rode across the lake and found the tunnel. Tom was leaning so far forward he almost fell off his chair. Where did it take you? asked Stella. She held her breath, hardly daring to think what she might hear next. Well, said Mrs Moon, sitting back, I was hoping we would be able to visit you in the same time as you had come from, but instead we came out in the garden at time e beyond even today. Stella put her hand to her mouth just as Tom's chair collapsed on the floor behind him. Wow! Did you see aliens and stuff? he cried, scrambling up. Stella shot him an impatient glance as Mrs Moon smiled and gazed towards the window. You know, dears, the garden was still as enchanting and happy a place as ever, filled with children's laughter and fun. She breathed in deeply and sat looking at the children. Mrs Moon, what did you find? asked Stella nervously. The old lady hesitated, then she smiled. Well, all I will say, Stella, is I am sure you will both enjoy the garden for many years to come. Stella bit her bottom lip as she tried to take in what Mrs Moon had just said. Did this mean they were going to meet Emma again in the future? Somehow she knew she couldn't ask. But you did go back home afterwards, didn't you? She said. Oh yes, of course we did, dear, but we got into a lot of trouble, you know. Tom and Stella leaned forward, eager to hear more. You see, we had stayed away for three days. The police were called and they went on at us so much in the end we told our story. Of course, no one believed us and we couldn't prove it. My father never really forgave me for making him look so foolish. It was all over the newspapers. A wave of sadness broke across Mrs Moon's face, but it passed as quickly as it had appeared. By the time I left home and met Edward, I'd started using my middle name Margaret. But why? said Stella. Well, 
you know, everyone I met as I was growing up seemed to remember the Emma Gladstone time tunnel story and it all got so tiresome in the end. The old lady stared up at the portrait again. Edward died 20 years ago. We hadn't any children and it was only then I decided to move back to the garden. With all the houses, with the houses all divided into flats now, it's perfect for me. I do so love it here. But what about Harry? said Stella suddenly. Mrs Moon chuckled. Of course, dearest Harry, that's who we were talking about when the, this all started. Well, Harry was given to me as a puppy for my fifth birthday. We lived for each other. My mother had that picture painted of us just after I got him. I missed him terribly when he finally died. To the children's surprise, a childlike grin now spread across the old lady's face. But then, you know what, Tom and Stella? It was a few days after I moved back here to the garden that Harry came back. Came back? they exclaimed. I could barely believe it myself, said Mrs Moon, chuckling. You see, I had got up early and gone for a walk in the garden. I've always woken early since Edward died. And then, out of the blue, there they were, the moles again. The old lady frowned and tutted. They vanished as quickly as they appeared, so naturally I thought I'd imagined it. But then, as I was walking back to my flat, he appeared racing across the lawn, soaking wet. It was Harry all right. I'd know my Harry anywhere. Confused thoughts flashed through Stella's mind as she tried to take in what she'd heard. Mrs Moon, are you telling us that your Harry here is the same Harry you had as a child? That's right, dear, said Mrs Moon, beaming. And you know, it all makes so much sense. She gazed out towards the garden. Harry's coming and going didn't bother me at first. I knew he must have found a way to travel between me and my old time. Perhaps the moles di divulge themselves to animals more readily. Who knows? He's gone to see the young me, I would chuckle to myself on the days I remember things clearly. You see, she went on, I believe Harry doesn't want me to grow lonely in my old age and that's why he keeps coming to see me. It also explains the, his absences when I was a child. Now the old lady looked down. But then, you know, dears, age has a way of playing tricks on you. I'm over a hundred now, and my memory comes and goes from one day to the next. That means I don't always remember about Harry or our adventure. Wow, said Tom, beaming with admiration. The old lady continued. You know, I do wonder if the moles have something to do with my long life and Harry's. He lived until he was 16, you know. That was quite a record back in those days. Stella stared in silent astonishment. Perhaps what Mrs Moon had told their mother about her age hadn't been so wrong after all. Mrs Moon paused, then gave the children a strange smile. You know, Tom and Stella, I feel happy now. I think Harry may have returned to the young Emma for good, to live his life out in peace. That's why I wanted to talk to you before it gets too late. Stella tried hard to swallow, but a lump had risen in her throat. Was Mrs Moon telling them she was about to die? The old lady leaned forward and pointed with her frail hand towards the side table. Look, Stella, in there. Slowly, Stella raised herself from her chair and pulled open the mahogany drawer. Her friendship bracelet, its cotton threads now worn and faded, lay on top of a pile of folded white napkins. She bowed her head, trying to hide her tears as she remembered Hannah's words. I think you should take it, dear, said Mrs Moon with a gentle smile. Tom suddenly jumped up. Mrs Moon, he blurted out, what's Charlie Green got to do with all this? Has he been down the time tunnel too? Stella shot him an impatient glance. Mrs Moon sat back in surprise. Bless me, no, dear, the old lady chuckled. Then she paused and cleared her throat. But, oh, I think I do see why you're asking. She studied the carpet for a few moments, then raised her eyes towards Tom. Well, Tom, I have to confess that Charlie does know about the time tunnel and that you went down it. In fact, he knew about that before you did. Tom and Stella exchanged looks of disbelief. You see, dears, what with Harry's coming and going or soaking wet, I felt I really had to explain in case he stopped him going back. Anyway, he was wonderful about it. She shook her head and smiled. You know, I think it was only when you two moved here that he really believed me. 
He's always been very protective about the moleshills since I told him, and I'm sorry, Tom, if he's been a bit sharp about them. But why didn't you tell us you were Emma? asked Tom. The old lady smiled. How could I, dear? You needed to go and rescue Jack. I didn't dare interfere with that. And then, what with my memory? A grandfather clock chimed in the shadows. Dear me, is that the time? said Mrs Moon in a fluster. Nurse Goodson will be here presently. You really must be getting home, dears. They all stood up and slowly she led them out to the kitchen. Well, children, it was wonderful to see you again, she said. And I'm so glad I've been able to share my story with you at last. We'll come and see you tomorrow, said Stella brightly. There's only one more week of the holidays left. Tom nodded in solemn agreement as they stepped out into the cold. Of course, dears. Goodbye, dears. And Mrs Moon closed the door. Your task today is to complete this grid. You will need to draw it out in your books or you could just write your answers in a sentence if this is easier for you. At the bottom under the grid are four statements about the story in chapter 17. Number one says Mrs Moon is actually Sophie Gladstone. Number two, Mrs Moon has travelled through the tunnel to the future. Number three, Charlie Green is not really a horrible person. And number four, Mrs Moon was happy the children visited her. Your job is to say if you agree, disagree or you're not sure. You are undecided whether it is true or not. Your second job is to be a detective and find the evidence in chapter 17 to prove that you are correct. On this screen I've shown you how to do this using the first statement. Mrs Moon is actually Sophie Gladstone. Now I know just having read chapter 17 that Mrs Moon isn't Sophie. So I have written I disagree in the disagree box. You could just tick this box if you like. Then in my reasons box I have said why. When I looked back at chapter 17, I read the part where so Stella asked Mrs Moon if she was Sophie. And Mrs Moon replied, oh dear me no. So in my um, reasons box, I'm going to explain my um, answer by saying, Mrs Moon can't be Sophie Gladstone because at the start of chapter 17, she says, oh dear me no, when Stella asks her if it is true. Perhaps you can fill in my next sentence with some more evidence of your own to say who she actually is. Then when you have done this, have a go at saying whether you agree with statements two, three and four. I can't wait to see what you think and the evidence that you've found in the story. Good luck. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. Remember to come back tomorrow when we're going to read the final chapter in our book. See you tomorrow. Bye!